Hi, I'm Dave Buchanan with Mayberry Material Handling, and today I'm going to show you the proper use and care of your PowerBoss Nautilus HD. The first thing you should do before starting your PowerBoss Nautilus HD is come over to the, the engine compartment, open up the hood, as well as the door giving you complete access to the engine compartment. You should check the oil through this dipstick, making sure you have oil in the engine before you start it. The next step would be to make sure the propane tank is installed and turned on before you start. The next thing you should do is drive the machine over to the area to put water in it. Water goes into your solution tank, which is the orange tank on the back. Add your water here and any detergent you choose to use, preferably a authorized detergent intended for floor scrubbers. Also you should inspect the dirty water tank to make sure the recovery tank or dirty water tank is empty. To start the engine on the Nautilus, your key switch is here, your horn button, and your engine speed switch. Down is turtle, the center is idle, and up is rabbit speed, maximum speed. When you're going to start the engine, your switch should be in the down position to turtle. Take your key, turn your key, the lights on the dash will come on. Idling the engine to shut it off. Your dash lights are located above the steering column. This would be your water temperature. This is your oil pressure gauge, and that is your check engine light. To the left of that is your LP fuel gas is low. When that comes on, your, your LP is low and you need to replace your LP tank. Continuing further to the left, you have two more lights here. When this, the, when the right one is lit, that is your clean water tank or your solution tank needs water. When the left light is lit, that is telling you that your dirty water tank or recovery tank is full and needs to be emptied. The four rocker switches you have here control the operations of the machine. With all three of these black rocker switches in the down position, all three of these are ready to operate, being your side broom, your main scrubbing brooms, and then your vacuum. The green switch controls everything. When all three of these are on, everything's ready to go, hit the green switch into the down position and all three of your controls will happen. When you hit your accelerator pedal with your foot, the brushes will spin, the water will flow, and 
the machine will start to travel. Forward, heel back is reverse. So with your green switch all the way down, your engine speed on high or rabbit, you can then continue to scrub your floor. If you want to just scrub your floor and not vacuum it, shut the vacuum off or squeegee assembly off. If you want to just vacuum the water off the floor, you can shut the scrub brushes off. If you don't want your side room on, you can shut your side room off. Or when you're done, shut everything off and your squeegee will actually delay, allowing you to continue vacuuming up what's underneath the machine. Below these switches is your brush pressure for minimal brush pressure, medium brush pressure, extra heavy. This switch or dial controls water. Currently the water is off, minimal water, maximum water. Again, no water will come out unless you hit the accelerator pedal. This switch here controls your headlights. The headlights will go on when it's in the forward position or closed position. In the open position or off position is back. These switches here control the raising and lowering of your squeegee assembly and your debris hopper. To raise the squeegee assembly, you press this switch and the squeegee assembly will raise up by itself. If you press both these switches, the squeegee assembly and the hopper will raise together. You have to use both to get the hopper up or just the squeegee to send the squeegee up. Once your hopper has been lifted to the height where you want to dump it, this switch here will open up the hopper door. The door will automatically close when you go to raise the hopper. The door will be closed until you hit this switch to open it. To lower both switches down and that will lower both the hopper and the squeegee assembly at the same time. the recovery tank. On the back of the machine you'll see three hoses. Recovery hose from squeegee to recovery tank. Drain hose for recovery tank. In order to drain the recovery tank open up one of the covers, squeeze the neck, loosen up the plug, and remove the plug. Let it drain into the proper draining location. Once it is empty, with this down and draining, you want to take a hose and rinse the inside of the recovery tank out from both sides. 
This hose here is for draining your clean water tank. Remove this plug and you can drain the clean water out of the solution tank. Once drained, put everything back together and hang it back up. Once the hopper is raised, you have safety pins that can be put in here to protect the hopper assembly from coming down. There is a safety bar on both sides. The safety pin should be in on both sides of the arms to ensure safety. On the left side of the machine, on the rear bottom of the recovery tank, you have a recovery tank drain cap. By removing the cap, you can then completely clean out the recovery tank. Before you go to remove that drain, Insert the safety pin, come down, loosen cap, you have a gasket inside the cap, don't lose this. You'll drain this out, getting all the dirt out of there that may have built up over time. Once clean, reinstall that hand tight. Put the pin back in its safety spot. Now that the hopper has been raised, you can then access the debris hopper. Remove the cover that will then give you the ability to visually inspect the inside of the hopper. You can also take this opportunity with a hose to spray the inside. This steel grate that you'll see in here protects the debris from getting into the recovery hose of the water that sucks the water out of the hopper. You can remove this by removing the pin and then pull it out of the hopper to be cleaned. Many times you can just clean this with a hose by spraying it in and cleaning all the debris off. Periodically, you will want to remove this, clean it by hand, reinstall it, insert the pin back in the hole, and then reinstall the hose onto the pipe. If you forget to do this, you won't recover any of the water. Once you're done, reinstall the cover. Make sure it's on there tight. Once you're done working on your hopper, emptying and, and cleaning it, you can then pull the pins out of the safety arms, put them back in their slots for storage. Do both sides, and then you can lower the hopper down safely from the front. squeegee assembly, now is the time to inspect and clean the squeegee assembly, making sure that there's no tears in the rubber, and if it's worn, it's time to flip it. 
The squeegee assembly has four usable edges. Currently, we're utilizing this edge as the lead. When this edge rounds over to the point, and you'll know because it's leaving water on the, on the floor or not drying it as well as it normally has, you can then flip the squeegee assembly by releasing this latch, taking the strap off from one end to the other, and you can then remove this squeegee and flip it from one end to the other, making the outside edge become your lead edge. And then when that's worn, you can flip it upside down and you have two more usable edges. The same can be had on the front, also a, a strap here that you can be removed. A closer look at the squeegee assembly, you'll see this latch pulls right off, re releases the strap, and the strap can be removed. We can then remove the squeegee blade and flip it from end to end or flip it upside down. Because this is a brand new squeegee assembly, we will leave this all in place and just reassemble. It's so simple to do, even a salesman can do it. Now that your debris hopper and your recovery tank are empty, it's now time to inspect the brushes on the scrub deck. First thing you do is come over, lift up the protective door, unlatch that, open up this squeegee, pull the cover off, and pull the brush out. You're going to look to inspect for damage, length, wear of the brush, make sure nothing's wrapped around it. Your wear indicator is this yellow bristle. If the bristles are down matching this yellow one, it's time to order new brooms. Put the broom back in, push it in, step down, goes all the way in, twist it and it falls right into place. When it holds itself up off the floor, you know it's in place. Take the cover, reinstall, okay, once that's installed, close your side skirt, close your Access the front brush from the operator's compartment side, and you can operate or access the rear brush side of the machine in the same manner. Please note that you are. PowerBoss Nautilus HD has come with a parts manual and a user's manual. The user's manual will cover everything in this video. You'll find some additional things that may not have been covered in the video. The video is not intended to replace, but to be uh, assistant to your user manual. Please, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call Dave Buchanan at Mayberry Material Handling. Be sure to help you. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Thank you for your business and happy cleaning.